Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Oh, and you just heard my dog sneeze. <laughs> and now he's walking between uh, the tripod here. What a happy little dog, aren't you? Yeah, he's a happy little dog. If you want to see him, look at the previous video. He's in the introduction. Today we're taking a look at this. This is the titanium, well no, it's not titanium, solid carbon fiber, titanium backspacer and pocket clip, D2 steel blade knife by Tucson. The model number is TS114-CF. And we've got a sort of harpoon style blade and a little bit funky kind of handle. It's a not a fantasy knife, but it's sort of leaning a little bit towards uh, that kind of style, uh, giving an homage to, you know, fantasy knives. It's a flipper, and uh, I like it. I really like this knife. Now, you may have noticed the last couple of videos, if you're a regular viewer, have been a little bit long, over 20 minutes. And uh, that tends to happen when I'm not feeling well and I start to just babble on. And even during edit, I'm not sure which parts I need to remove and which parts I shouldn't and stuff. I'll try to keep it, you know, well under 20 minutes today, even though I really, really love this knife. I've had it for several weeks now and um, it's great. Why don't you uh, grab yourself a snack and a drink and sit down. We're going to put the camera on the tabletop and take a good look at this. Coming to you right now. Let's go over the size of this knife a little bit. It is an extra large knife, at least in my opinion. Kind of like the Ontario Rat 1. And as you can see, very similar in size. I might even uh, say that this thing's got a little bit better grip than the Ontario Rat 1 in some ways. I really enjoy this thing. We've got a little bit, not really a forward choil, but a place you can grab your finger, your finger on the blade if you want to. Put your thumb up here if you want to do some close-up work where you need a little extra control. Or you can grip it back here. Or you can grip it way back here if you need extra reach and still have, you know, full control of the knife behind that first finger toil. You know, reverse grips, you know, you can have a lot of power this way if you need to do slicing forward. And a reverse pull grip is extra comfortable, you know, with this angle right there, if you need to be doing a powerful pull cut. But all the rest of the cuts, you know, like you know, fist grip, uh, saber grip, either thumb on the top, sometimes I put the thumb slightly on the side. Those all work very well. You know, the close-up grip, you know, all these grips, it's a quite comfortable knife, even though the handle looks like it might be a little uncomfortable. It simply is not. We've got solid carbon fiber on recessed liners. You can see the liner, just a little bit of the edge of it right in there. So that's great. This is a titanium backspacer, a large one with a big lanyard option back here and some large jimping back here for grip. Titanium pocket clip with two screws, super solid. Uh, and the pocket clip's made very well. Uh, it works very well to go over a pocket or the lip of a pocket. Whatever, what do you call this part of a pocket? I don't know. And it just slides on all the way. That's as far as it's designed to go. So you've got, I don't know, over half of an inch of the knife sticking out, you know, one and a half centimeters or so. It, that's not bad. It's that gray kind of titanium color and then the carbon fiber, so it doesn't really stand out. It's not obnoxious. It's it's not grabbing your attention. It's just sitting there. And uh, the screws that uh, Tucson uses are, you know, invariably very good quality screws. Uh, we've got T8 all around wherever you have the screws, and these are recessed flathead kind of instead of those rounded head screws. And so you know, they don't get in your way. And even on the pocket clip, you know, they're set in and uh, wonderful. I like this nice, simple, clean lines of the pocket clip. And um, it helps if they would have gone, you know, and made the pocket clip, you know, sort of dramatic, I think it would take away from, you know, the good looks of the handle. Uh, as you can see, that is solid carbon fiber with the milled out sections, you know, three little lines there that helps grip with your thumb, you know, if you're using the knife this way. Uh, and there's a wide enough space here. And they actually took off some of the carbon fiber here on the edges, you know, for putting your thumb on there. That, it does help. 
We've got the pocket clip is loosened on this, not the pocket clip. The pivot pin is loosened right there with a T8. And it's one of those non-free spinning pivot pins, which I really like. And on this side, you know, the got the nice flat look on the screw instead of having a Torx head in there. So you know for sure that this is the side to adjust it on. I really dislike knives when they put both sides with a Torx head screw or whatever, but one side is designed not to turn. You're just asking for people to screw up that <laughs> the, the screw head there. It, yeah, this is much better. Fairly large trial, but it, I mean, sharpness trial here, but it's a shallow one. It's not a deep one. It goes all the way past the plunge, so it's designed very well. You've got a nice belly here, a long straight section, saber grind, which is a flat grind that doesn't come quite to the spine. Swedge up top here, kind of a harpoon tip on the blade there, which I really like the look of. It's a strong tipped blade, uh, so it's got a strong, well, a strong tip. Fairly thick blade, well over an eighth of an inch, and we'll do the specs a little bit later. By the way, this logo here, it says, um, what does it say? K-E, I think, on there. But I read that it was Caleb Fisher that was is the designer of this knife, so I'm going to have to double check that. Um, if you know exactly who this designer of this knife, of this image is, and I'll give you a close-up of it, please let me know. It says D2 there. You can see a little bit of a line here from the detent ball where it slides across the ricasso of the blade. And then on this side, the show side, everything's nice and clean. You have a little bit of the, you got the Two Sun logo right in there that's been laser etched. So it's not, doesn't have too much writing all over it, but it's got a great look and design to it. Lock up, excellent. It's just fully engaged. And so there's lots of room for this knife, the lock to wear over time and have a very long life. Lock up a solid, no blade play side to side. Up and down, no problem at all. There's nice jimping here on the liner lock release, and there's a cutaway on this side. Makes it very easy to get your thumb in there to undo the lock. And you know, then you put your index finger up here, close the knife. And it works very well, right or left-handed. You know, it's easy to get used to this knife, very comfortable indeed. I really like uh, the look and feel of this knife, and it works great. I've used it for doing all kinds of EDC tasks, cardboard packages, uh, all kinds of other tasks as well. And it's got a very well-made edge and design. Um, you know, the grind angle's not perfect, but it's a good grind. And uh, we're going to take a nice look at all of the uh, specs and details of this knife. And while we're talking about that, this will be on the corner of the image. Once that's gone, I'm done doing the specs. The weight of this knife, 128 grams, 4.5 ounces. Very good weight for such a large knife. The factory sharpness, 135 bess. That's very sharp from the factory. I like that a lot. It's no longer that sharp because I've used it a fair bit. I've carried this knife more than I usually carry most of my knives simply because I enjoy it that much. The uh, length of the cutting edge, 9.17 centimeters, that's 3.61 inches. The length of the blade, a little bit less because the handle comes forward, no, 8.63 centimeters, 3.4 inches. The uh, blade thickness is three and three quarter millimeters, which is 0.1475 of an inch, you know, well over an eighth. We've got a blade depth, that's this dimension. Oh, I've got a fingerprint on there again real quick. It's actually bigger, about an inch up from the cutting edge where I usually measure it. It's bigger there than it is up there. 2.25 centimeters, 0.887 of an inch, right where my thumbnails are coming together. The uh, thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.51 millimeters, which is 20 thousandths of an inch. It's almost exactly the number that I look for. I want the edge to be that thinness or thickness as you would, whichever way you're looking at it. The grind angle, it's a little bit greater of a grind angle than I like. I prefer around for D2 steel between 18 and 20 degrees is what I like per side. This one's 21.7 and 22 and a half degrees per side. Yeah, the first time I sharpen it, which won't be too long from now, I'll bring it down to 20, I think. 
Now for the measurements on the handle, the handle length, not counting the uh, titanium coming at the end here, just the carbon fiber, 12.94 centimeters, 5.09 inches. Uh, the grip area, and this is more of a rough number, around 10 centimeters, just a tiny bit under 4 inches. That's why you got that huge range of grip on there. The handle thickness is, not counting the pocket clip, 1.425 centimeters, that's 0.56 of an inch. So like I said, this is an extra large handle. A lot of knives are half an inch or less. This is just a little over half an inch there. The um, handle depth, that's this dimension. It's actually largest right there. I don't count the flipper tab. Uh, 2.27, 2.72 centimeters, which is 1.07 inches. And when you close the knife, it's largest right here again. And that is 2.91 centimeters, 1.147 of an inch. And the total length of the knife when the blade's deployed from tip to the very end of the handle here, including the lanyard hole here, 22.09 centimeters, which is 8.697 of an inch. So basically eight and three quarter inches long, which is very good. The balance point of this knife is right there, which is you know, very good, exactly where you like it to be. And now let's take the knife apart and I'll show you the insides of it. So here it is taken apart. You can see the solid carbon fiber in there and the inset liner. The liner's quite thin, so it's not skeletonized. doesn't need to be. Uh, it's a stonewash treatment, which is kind of hidden. <laughs> but I guess they also use that to help get rid of some of the uh, sharp edges and things. Ceramic detent, ceramic uh, ball bearings in here with a nylon housing. Uh, we've got a long titanium backspacer here that's got pins in place and there's the screw for putting uh, the body screw through. It screws right into the titanium on both sides. That's a good way to uh, make it work out. And you know, a decent sized stop pin. It's really straightforward and simple design that works very, very well. By the way, just like Tucson always does, there's a ramp right there for the detent ball to slide up when you're going to close the knife, which is quite helpful. Now let's go back to the rest of the video. Now for the price of this knife, it depends on where you shop, of course, just like all knives. And knives tend to be cheapest in the United States, and this one is available mostly on eBay right now. eBay's got a lot of stock on this. Um, Amazon has it as well. The lowest price where I got mine from is from White Mountain Knives. $66.99. Take off 10% when you use coupon code CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge. $60.29 US for this knife. He's out of stock on the day that I'm recording this and editing it. Uh, but you can click on the, there's an uh, orange or beige kind of color notify me button. You click on it and leave your email and you'll be notified when they come in. Uh, but you could also get it at Amazon for 66 US dollars plus four and a half dollars shipping, but that ships from China. Uh, anybody can sell on Amazon these days and that store, you know, ships from China. So that takes a long time to get here. Um, or you can get it on eBay that ships from China as well. And it's $80 on eBay. But of course, eBay's got auctions for two sun knives all the time. And so I'll leave a link down below for White Mountain Knives, Amazon, and eBay to make it easy for you to get one of these knives if you want it. Um, like I said, the lowest price uh, was at White Mountain Knives for just over $60, which is around 83 Canadian right now. The Canadian dollar is really taking a hit this week. Uh, or around 54 euros, euros, around 48 British pounds. Of course, in Europe and UK, that's before the VAT has been added. <laughs> so, the overall feeling that I have of this knife, I love the design. I like the feel. It's got good control in hand, very many different grips. Uh, looks good, functions well, slices and cuts very well. It can do robust cutting, strong tip uh, for piercing if you need to. And the full thickness of the blade comes almost all the way down, right until right there. And then it starts tapering just that last inch. Pocket clip, very functional. I really like it. I do wish they would have made it left and right. Um, 
all it would need is one extra little hole right here. And I really wish they would have done it because this style pocket clip would easily work on both sides. I like the huge jimping that they put on here instead of really fine jimping. It's very functional. Action's great. Uh, lock up. All that stuff's really, really good. And they didn't put in a rotating pivot pin. Tucson likes to put in fixed pins, so I like that. Great detent on this knife. One of the few things I tend not to like is satin finish because it leaves fingerprints all over the place. You can clean a knife and you touch it and you've got fingerprints, at least if your skin's a little oily like mine is. So I prefer stonewashed steel, but yeah, you can clean this and make it pretty as well. Not a problem. And functionally, it's a very good knife. So if you're looking for a knife like this, I highly recommend that you get one uh, because it's very well made and it looks good. I hope you found the details and information that I provided in this video helpful. If so, please click the like button. If you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe and click that bell so you're notified of videos. And uh, one little bit of news, I had been backing up all my videos onto uh, this Utah Guns and something huge tube. Uh, but I've uh, since then been pointed out, pointed in the direction of library LBRY uh, .tv site that is really, really good for uh YouTube, uh, video creators and especially YouTube creators because they moved over my 1,000 newest videos to their site automatically. And uh, when I put up a new video here on YouTube, they back it up there as well, which is a great backup service for me and for anybody on YouTube, especially if you're a knife or a gun reviewer, because we just never know when YouTube's going to you know, take our videos down and stuff. And so it's a great service. So if you're not yet, if you are a YouTube creator of knives and gun videos, um, consider library. I got a link down below to make it easy for you to find that. It works online on web pages and they've also got an app that you can use to, uh, to do your work on library. So thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.